It might be the end of summer, but that's no reason to stop wearing translucent watches that are typically reserved for sandy beaches, hot weather. In fact, I wear translucent watches year-round and have always enjoyed these fun and stylish timepieces. Take a look at this funky DW5600 SK, for instance. One of my favorite G-Shocks that came with a clear bezel and a smoky translucent band. It has this excellent mirrored finish on the dial, which is super cool. And you may recall my aftermarket bezel video, which is linked right up top, where I replaced the clear bezel on this watch with a stainless steel bezel. It looked really awesome. I loved it, but I eventually decided to go back to the original just because I really like the way it looks. And speaking of other translucent watches, I also have this F91 WS7 with a gray case and a clear band. This is a pretty fun watch to wear, but man, this watch feels really small on the wrist after wearing G-Shocks for so long. But it's definitely a classic and still a favorite of mine. But today the two watches I want to focus on are both recent releases from Casio. We've got right here the DW5600 LS7 with a fluorescent dial and a translucent band. And then we also have the brand new GM5600CM1, which is part of the new G-Shock Metal Covered series with a translucent camouflage band and a really nice stainless steel bezel lasered with a camouflage pattern. So with so many G-Shocks to choose from, you're really only limited by your style and by how many G-Shocks you can accumulate before you admit that you have a serious problem. And honestly, I'm approaching that pretty quickly. At any rate, let's see what sets these two G-Shock watches apart and give these two beauties a quick look. So let's hop right in. Okay, so to start off with, this DW5600 LS7 was released just a couple months ago and is part of a slick series of watches with fluorescent materials and translucent bands. There's this super cool translucent blue watch with a neon dial, but I opted for the translucent white version with a bright orange and red dial. And this watch feels really amazing on the wrist, as do most G-Shocks. It's super lightweight that you forget that you're wearing it. And the bezel actually has this slightly rubbery feel to it. And it is neat to see the underlying white case through that translucent bezel. And let's talk about the band for a minute. The band on this watch is really nice. It's got this matte feel to it. It's definitely not sticky or gummy, but it has almost this smooth texture that is just a joy to wear on the wrist. And as usual, this watch contains the 3229 module, which is a pretty standard fare these days with Casio. And it has a bright green electroluminescent backlight with afterglow and flash alert. And here's a shot of the screw down case back on the back of this watch. And the contrasting colors are really fun on this watch. It's been my go-to watch for a good part of the summer. It's just super easy to wear and feels great. The one downside, though, is that A button in the top left. And man, that thing is hard to press. Let's see if I can get this thing going here. So you really have to dig in with your fingernail. It's hit or miss. Sometimes it's easy. So there you go. You do have to apply a bunch of force to get that thing working. Not nearly as bad as some other G-Shocks that I've seen but you know since it's a stopwatch and a timer reset button along with the time adjustment button I mean why do they make it so difficult to press I just don't get it and the bezel doesn't really get in the way like I've seen on some other G-Shocks so honestly it's just kind of a little nitpick but yeah if you're a fan of G-Shocks and you're looking for some other fun styles that can add to your collection definitely give this lineup a look as there are quite a few options to choose from and they all look pretty cool all right so here's the watch on my 6.75 inch wrist and the final verdict on this one is that it is super comfortable to wear pretty stylish with a very cool translucent band and bezel 
A great G-Shock to add to my collection, no doubt. Alright, let's hop on over to Casio's latest G-Shock release. This is the GM5600 SCM1, which is one of a trio of their new metal covered series, which also includes the GM110 and the GM6900. All of these watches feature a camouflage pattern on the translucent band, the dial, and the stainless steel bezel. And speaking of the bezel, Casio tells me that this bezel is forged, cut, brushed, and polished, and then given a camouflage pattern using a laser. And it is a pretty cool pattern if you check it out up close. And man, it really does feel nice. I've never actually owned a stainless steel bezel straight from Casio before, but the quality is definitely there. The finish and the polishing on this is really high quality. And that laser etching has kind of this slight texture to it, which feels nice and gives it something interesting to touch. And it's not ostentatious at all. It certainly does not detract from the other features of the watch. It's not gaudy. It's just really subtle. It's nice. And they also carry that grayish camo pattern uh, over to the dial, where the only word you'll see on the dial is Casio, down at the 6 o'clock position. And of course that camouflage pattern is carried over to the translucent band as well, which looks really nice at first glance, but wow, I am not a fan of this band. It's definitely built well with nice thick plastic, and it includes some quick release pins, which make it really easy to swap in some alternate bands if you want, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But yeah, something about this band just does not feel good on the wrist to me at least. Uh, maybe it's your cup of tea, but I just can't really get into it. So here it is on the wrist, and you know, check it out. When you put it on, it kind of has this like squeakiness that I just can't deal with. The band is not smooth and matte like the 5600 LS. It's slick and shiny and kind of plasticky. And I guess I'm just not a huge fan of that kind of texture or styling. So yeah, seeing it in person just doesn't really press my buttons. It's definitely long enough. It's got 11 holes. It's got a pretty decent uh, stainless steel buckle and a big chunky band catch. And it even has these little slight ribs on the end that kind of give it something a little extra. But yeah, for me it's a hard pass, which is a shame because it's kind of a cool design. But I'm willing to look past that because any DW5600 style band will do. And here's a shot where I brought over the band from my GA2100. And it fits perfectly. I actually like this black band better than the original camo band. And then I have these adapters that came with my DW5610SUS. And those fit really great as well. So you definitely have a bunch of strap or band options with this watch. So apart from that watch strap, I like everything else about this watch. The electroluminescent backlight is relatively subdued and it's a very nice greenish, grayish color. And the pushers on this watch are obviously stainless steel and they're slightly bigger than normal. But man, thank God that A button is not recessed. It sits there just waiting to be pushed and how glorious that is. And check this out. One push and you can reset the time. So that's very handy and I really like it a lot. And you can reset the timer and the stopwatch without having to break any fingernails. But it's finally good to get a look at one of these stainless steel bezels up close. I'm really impressed with the quality. The fit and finish is excellent. You can really see the delineation there between some of the polished edges and the laser etching. And you can see here over on the side that that part is, is nicely brushed right there, but then you have some polishing inside and around the top part of the bezel. So it's, it's really nice to look at and it reflects the, the light pretty nicely as well. And one thing that I've never seen before on a stainless steel Casio is the use of these 
hex screws for the bezel which secured to the case. Honestly, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, I guess it depends on if you want to deconstruct the watch at all, but it's something you should know and would obviously require an extra tool for that. So leave a comment down below if you've had any experience with that. I'd be interested to know how these hex screws hold up or how difficult it is to, to unscrew them. So here's the watch on the wrist with the original band. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this band and it's really a shame because I do like that camouflage pattern. So yeah, swap it out for a nice black band or even some type of aftermarket bracelet and customize it however you'd like. So yeah, if I had to choose between these two G-Shocks, which one would I choose? Gosh, that's a tough question. I mean, right now I'd probably have to go with the 5600 LS just because it is so lightweight and I do enjoy that bright green backlight at nighttime. But over time I can see myself wearing the stainless steel one more and more often. It's just so cool and the design is incredible. So yeah, just ditch the band and find another strap or bracelet that you like and I'm sure it'll look great. Alright, two of my new favorite G-Shocks, both with transparent elements. Leave me some comments down below if you have any questions on either of these watches. And I've also got some uh, links in the description below if you want to learn a bit more and check them out. But anyway, that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And once again, thanks for watching Casio. We'll catch you in the next video.